Welcome to a hot and sunny Germany, where we are here to drive this, the new BMW 1 Series. Now, you've probably read and heard a lot about the new 1 Series, but the thing that's probably captured your attention the most is the fact this is not a rear-wheel drive BMW. No, this 1 Series is front-wheel drive, and in the case of this M135i, it's four-wheel drive, and that is big news. Now, obviously, there are many reasons for BMW going front-wheel drive with the new 1 Series. Um, obviously, there's the cost saving involved in sharing a platform with other models, such as the 2 Series Active Touring. But one of the big reasons, they say, is that by being able to have a front-wheel drive packaging, they've created more space on the same footprint as the old car. And, you know, it's worked. It's more spacious in here. There's more leg and headroom in the back. The boot is now 380 litres, which is class competitive, at least. It's generally a more practical family car. Now, Elsewhere, it's typical BMW, and that's a good thing. We've got a really nicely laid out dashboard. Everything's where you'd expect it to be. Build quality is pretty top notch. Lots of soft touch plastics. Everything's tightly screwed together. Um, now we've got the TFT dials first seen on the Z4. Yeah, they look quite fancy, but frankly, they lack the clarity of the old analog dials. But you know, that's a progress for you, I guess. And we are connected up to the kazoo as you'd expect. So we've got a touchscreen infotainment system which can also be controlled by the iDrive, and that's a good thing. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and BMW's version of the Hey Mercedes voice control, which does actually work pretty well. It's quite prompt. Uh, it can do lots of different car commands. It's a really good system. Um, what else? Well, driving position's nice. You sit nice and low, chunky steering wheel. It feels like a BMW. It's only when you look out the front, you see the high scuttle where they've had to package the front wheel drive drivetrain that you realize this is a bit more different to your normal one series. So what we really want to know is, what does the new BMW 1 Series drive like? Is it still a proper BMW? Well, the initial signs are positive. There's the same taut ride we've become used to in these M Series BMWs. The steering feels light and precise at these modest speeds. There's no sense that it's steering and driving the wheels at the same time. It, it feels like a BMW. Engine's good too. So we've got the 2.0-litre four-cylinder in the M135i. It's 302 brake horsepower, 332 pound-foot of torque at just 1,750 RPM. Now, BMW claimed 0-62 in 4.8 seconds, and to be honest, it feels that quick. Doesn't matter what gear you're in, just put your foot down and this thing just takes off. It's properly rapid. This is a quick car. Sounds good too. Initially, you get the nice sort of burble that you get on the old six-cylinder cars, but work it harder and it starts to get a bit synthesized, particularly in sport mode. It's not a bad sounding unit, it's just not that characterful, creamy six-cylinder howl that we're used to. Effective though, really effective. And this car's fitted with the eight-speed Steptronic as well, which left to its own devices, just happily slurs away, but it responds really quickly to the paddles. They've upped the shift time, or rather reduced it, and it feels really snappy. Smaller engine cars have the seven-speed DCT or a six-speed manual, but this is only eight-speed. And frankly, most of the time, I think it's a really good transmission. It suits the car. Now, what about the chassis? Well, this M135i has the X-Drive four-wheel drive, and on this application, that means you've got a torsion differential on the front axle, and a hang-on clutch at the back. So normally it's running front-wheel drive. Um, if it senses slip, it can send torque to the back in 250 milliseconds, but it's only ever a maximum 50-50 torque split. So this isn't gonna have your typical rear-wheel drive BMW handling characteristics. Good thing is, it really turns in well. There is a lot of front-end bite, and the way that multi-link rear axle is set up, the car pivots around you. It feels really agile and the steering weights up nicely. It does not feel like a BMW, but it feels good. It's certainly more engaging than, say, an A35. It's not perfect, though. I've noticed coming out of some of the sharper corners, when you put your foot down, you start to get some tug through the wheel. Not much, but it just tightens. You can feel the torsion diff doing its thing, and that is not what you expect from a BMW. But other than that, Oh, it's a difficult one because it's good to drive. It's more agile and engaging than you expect it to be, but it's not a BMW. It just doesn't feel like you're expecting a 1 Series to feel. Now, for the target market, even M135i drivers, are they going to be that worried? I'm not sure they are. It feels good enough, and that seems like it's damning with faint praise. It's not meant to be. There is talent in this chassis. It's, it's really, really good. 
However, probably the most telling fact is that when we were speaking to the head honcho of chassis, Bernard van der Meer, last night, he reckoned the 118D, the front wheel drive car, is probably the best of the bunch because it feels lighter and more agile. And that is a telling revelation. Now, I've had a quick go in the one series with the diesel, the front wheel drive, and he's right. It just got a lightness, a deftness to it that this misses out on. This is really good. You just feel like the chassis is doing as much of the work as you are. The control systems are doing it and they're really smooth. So it's got this ASR traction control and it's really, really good. You don't notice it working. There's no sudden power being pulled away from you. It's, it's extremely effective but you just know it's there. Other aspects, well, this car's on adaptive dampers, you get comfort and sport, and as we said earlier, there is a tautness to the ride, which on these smooth German roads isn't too much of a problem, but you do feel it, even in comfort, the car just sort of dropping into potholes. It's not noisy, it rounds the edges off, but it's a firm ride. Summing this car up, it's really difficult. It's really quick, the engine is strong. I'm, I'm impressed by how much performance is on offer, but that synthesized sound. If you got used to a six cylinder in your one series, I think you're gonna be a little bit disappointed. Certainly not with the performance, but with the sound. The chassis, it's agile. It really is agile. It bags a front end grip. You can throw it around. You can feel it starting to move. It's, it gives you options, but oh God, you just, you feel like you're gonna miss the rear wheel drive just a little bit because as soon as the four wheel drive feels like the car's starting to rotate, you get on the throttle, it just wants to pull it straight. Uh, and it's very natural, it does it really well. It's just, it's getting your head around the fact this is how a small BMW is gonna drive from here on in. It's not bad news. We just have to let the rear wheel drive thing go because this is how it is from now on. In this sector right now, I think I'd have one of these over an A35. Over a Golf R, I think that might be a slightly closer call. I think we need to get those two cars together and find out.